Welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. We are now well into June and we uh, are taping here on Thursday night. We've actually had a very positive week in the markets. The market's up a couple hundred points here through Thursday. And as always, we'll see what happens on Friday. Um, that's the good news. I think most investors will um, be happy that the market is up. But I will say that the thing to be more concerned about is maybe what's driving the market, what the only real available catalyst is right now, is essentially the Fed. Um, a lot of the move up this week was a result of the fact that the Federal Reserve is clearly not going to raise rates in June, and the market had um, priced in the possibility of that happening. And now I think not only is June a virtually 0% possibility, but July is very low as well. Uh, not out of the question in July, particularly if they end up getting a great June jobs number. But after the May jobs number report that came out last Friday, um, it's hard to be optimistic about that. They created 38,000 new jobs in the month of May. It's the worst new job creation number we've had in about six years. Um, and there was a Verizon strike that played into those numbers, but even apart from that, it was still way, way down. So um, I think unless it was just an anomaly of a number, it appears that there's more labor patch weakening that is going to play into what we would expect from the Federal Reserve. But essentially, um, that really was a big factor in the markets this week. There's more of a ride in the th asset classes that easy Federal Reserve policy, easy monetary policy, low interest rates help. Those things all weaken the dollar to some degree. And that's a boom for oil prices, which rose above $51 this week, the highest it's been since July of last year. So you have high yield bonds going higher, uh, energy stocks, financial stocks, and emerging markets all going higher. Uh, those things have all been very correlated together. So um, we shall see what happens here. But that's kind of what took place in the markets this week. I think on the election front, I'd like to give you a little update there. Um, there. There is certainly clarity now around who the two candidates are, uh, with Donald Trump having the mathematical lockup, uh, no other opponents left in the Republican field. Hillary Clinton still has an opponent left, but she's mathematically clinched the Democratic nomination. So barring some kind of just crazy event at the convention or one of them dropping out or, I don't know, maybe one of them being indicted, uh, pretty much we know who those two candidates are, okay? Um, and I think that there's some bad things about both of them as far as what investors would prefer. Um, but I also think that the nuances as to how it will play out are going to be very interesting. And, and I talked on CNBC this week about the role of the Senate races and the House races and, and how getting clarity about what each candidate will actually do and what each candidate can actually do is going to be an important part of how we're positioning client portfolios going into the election. I'll give you a quick example. If I really believed that the Medicare uh, negotiation and pharmaceutical price fixing was going to get through that is being advocated by the candidates, then we would be positioning portfolios accordingly. And frankly, it would probably have to result in some reduction in our exposure to the drug companies as great a dividend payers as they are. But at this time, we would suspect those things are not very probable based on how we see the Senate races matching up with the presidential race. So the election is still a factor, and we're going to keep talking about that. Um, you know, there's a chart this week in the uh, written Dividend Cafe. If you go to DividendCafe.com, our chart of the week, I don't normally like to highlight a certain section of it, but in this case, because you're watching the, the video, I, I would encourage you to go to the site and look at the chart. Um, it goes back 26 years looking at the return of the S&P 500 without dividends, the S&P 500 with dividends, and then the S&P 500 stocks that have been all consistent dividend growers. And, and I just want you to look at that chart and get an idea of why the mathematics through a big bull market of the 90s and a bear market we had in the 2000s has been such a big deal. So the chart of the week you should check out. We talked about the election. Oil and the Fed are the story of the market. And I want to say happy birthday to my wife. 
I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching Dividend Cafe.